Hello everybody, thank you for joining us today to find out more about the Sustainable Business Awards. I'm Fiona Stevenson from the Sustainable Business Network and I'm joined by Rod Oram, business journalist. And we're going to give you some information about the awards to help you with your entry. So how we'll run this, I'll give you a few brief information about the awards, such as the key dates and categories. Then I'll hand over to Rod, who will give you some top tips on how to write an award-winning entry. Rod is our head judge, so really he has the inside knowledge on um, what you need to do to succeed. And then we'll have a chance for some questions. So do fire them through using the Q&A link on your screen and we'll answer them afterwards. So first of all, the Sustainable Business Awards have been running for 18 years. They've been called the Oscars of Sustainability and they're really a fantastic chance to celebrate your sustainability achievements. So we encourage everybody to enter and I think this year, more than ever, we really need to celebrate the progress that people and businesses have been making. It's been a really tough year. And we know that a lot of people and organisations have done incredible things, particularly to pivot during COVID. Um, and we really want to recognise those organisations that have done well to do well for people and for nature. So it's a great chance to get recognition. And we've got a new category this year, particularly focused on COVID and the businesses that have done well during that. So let, first of all, let me give you a few key dates that you need to be aware of. So first of all, entries are now open. You can enter on our website, sustainable.org.nz slash awards, and they're open until the 28th of July. So you've got four weeks to submit your entry. Um, the COVID category, the new category on resilience in crisis, doesn't open until later. And the reason we've done that is to give you more time to demonstrate the impact that what you have done has made. So there's a bit more time for that. We'll announce a finalist at the end of August, and we do a big promotion for all of those. Last year, there were 90 finalists, and we wrote a short story about all of them and shared them through our channels. So even if you're not a winner, just being a finalist is a fantastic opportunity to get recognition for your work. If you are a finalist, we ask for a second round of information, and that probes a bit more deeply into your initiative and also your business generally. So you'll be asked to submit another entry. And then we celebrate the winners on the awards night on the 19th of November. This year, the awards night will be slightly different because of the differences we've had this year during COVID. We're going to broadcast it live and make it free, accessible and low carbon for everyone. And that will be run in conjunction with some small events around the country as well. So everyone will have the chance to participate this year. The categories. Now, there are 12 different categories you can enter. We've made a few changes this year based on the feedback we've got and also where we see as the key areas of direction. So the areas you can enter, and you can enter in more than one, are the sustainability superstar. So that's the award for the individual that has done the most for to lead and inspire sustainability. Communicating for impact. And that, as it says, is all about communication. So that's for organisations that have done a really amazing job on communicating the impact they've made for sustainability. Social Impactor is about an organisation that is improving people's lives through their operations. Going Circular recognises an organisation that has made good progress towards a circular economy. And by that, we mean either designing or operating in a way to keep resources in play as long as possible and eliminate waste. There are two new climate categories this year, climate action leader and climate action innovator. And the main difference between those is that the first one, the leader, that's all about what you're doing to reduce your own carbon footprint. And the innovator category is through your, an innovation of your product and service so other people can reduce their carbon footprints. Outstanding collaboration is all about a partnership between organizations to work together to improve sustainability. Tech for good is a new category and that's all about technology, a new technology information that's improving people or nature. Good food is all about the food system. Restoring nature is for a business that is helping improve nature outcomes. 
Change maker is our category to award a young person that is doing good. So this might be an unknown hero who's doing amazing things. And we're seeing some of the young people really doing incredible things at the moment. And then the final category is the category on resilience and crisis. And that, like I said, is to recognize an organization that has pivoted to have some really good social or environmental outcomes. Now there's some more information about all of those categories on our website. So do go through there to find out more. So that's just a very brief introduction to the awards. Now, Rod, I'm gonna hand over to you if you'd like to give some inside tips on what people can do to make an award-winning entry. Over to you. Thanks. Um, kia ora tata, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for uh, joining Fiona and me um, on this webinar. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, just uh, emphasize that we're really keen to get your questions. So um, on the Facebook live streaming, if you um, put your comments in there, um, some SBN colleagues will harvest those and paste them in a Q&A page uh, that uh, Fiona and I see here on Zoom. So we'll be able to uh, get through uh, lots of your questions. And also uh, we're recording this. Um, and so if you um, want to look back on it or share it uh, with your colleagues in due course uh, before you sit down and do your entry or while you're doing your entry, uh, please do, because that will be a, a valuable um, resource for you uh, on the awards website. Um, first of all, um, let me say a little bit about um, us judges, because it, uh, we are, in, in essence, your audience uh, that you're addressing your entry to. Um, it's always a great privilege, privilege for us to be judges um, because we get to know um, people and companies and what they get up to. And um, so first of all, rest assured that we treat what you tell us in strict confidence. Um, and so please feel very free to tell us um, all that you need to do, um, uh, being assured of that confidentiality. Um, next is that we spend a lot of time on each entry and indeed many entries and often in a number of categories. So we very much appreciate um, entries that are very uh, well organized um, and have a clear story, a clear narrative to them with all the supporting evidence. And I'll come back to that in due course when I talk about uh, your entries uh, more fully. Um, the next thing I'd say about us is that we are a large uh, pool of judges um, and uh, we have um, all the expertise needed um, to cover um, that wide range of uh, categories uh, that Fiona just um, described to you. And, and we're a combination of deep specialists in, um, in, in various, various of those, those fields, but also people like me who are a generalist. So I'm a business journalist ranging very far and wide um, across the economy, um, taking a great deal of interest in many sectors. So as a generalist, I have less deep knowledge than specialists, um, but I'm able to sort of perhaps traverse a little more widely um, um, across sectors um, and bringing that extra point of reference. So I think the combination of the depth of knowledge in our judges, um, but also the breadth um, in terms of the range themselves, but also having uh, generalists like me, um, means that we bring um, a good deal of knowledge um, and perspective to what we're doing. But of course, above all, um, that your success depends on the quality of your entry. So that's why I'd like to now focus uh, a little bit about that. Um, if I'd like, I'd like to make one recommendation first of all, which is, um, even if you are representing a large organization, um, I think it really pays off um, and shows in the quality of an entry where um, before sitting down to actually write an entry, the people preparing that entry um, discuss quite widely with their colleagues um, about um, the thrust of the entry and their perspective on it and, and about the story you're trying to tell. And um, that often comes through um, in terms of how, how well the um, entry um, tells that story. And for me, and I, I say this from my own perspective of um, 
uh, preparing uh, entries in all sorts of journalism awards, for example. And that process also often ends up telling us something about ourselves uh, that we didn't know and, and about our organization and about what we're doing. And so I, I uh, for me, a cherished hope for you um, in the awards is that you come out of it having greater clarity about what you're doing because you've had to think hard about um, uh, d working out how to tell that story to us. So the next point I'd make is please be very clear in the pitch you're making to us. Um, it is a story, a true story you're telling us. It is a narrative. Um, so we, we want to know what you've been doing, but crucially why you've been doing, what the strategic um, imperative was, uh, what the drivers of that was. Then the next thing is what have you achieved? So we're interested in how you've achieved that, what the impact is, how you're measuring it, and what evidence you're giving us. I would also like to know uh, if you'd like to share about some of the things that didn't work along the way, um, because that um, always gives us um, a little bit of a perspective into um, how you've been working and how you've been um, dealing with some the inevitable um, setbacks along the way. The next point I'd make to you is that we judge solely by the information you give us. Um, so um, please do be very full in your application um, and don't leave um, gaps in the story or, or fail to connect dots with us in the hope that or the expectation that we are bringing um, our own knowledge um, to your entry. Now, in many cases, um, we judges will know perhaps something about your company, perhaps quite a lot, um, or, or even about the initiative you're doing. But we can only judge solely on the information you provide us. Um, now, it's all right to send us off to some additional links, um, say, to something on your website um, or a video or something like that. But please don't um, overdo that. Please don't send us off scurrying around, clicking on all kinds of things to bring more information into the um, entry itself. And of course, as I say, we are bringing our, our, our knowledge and our expect, uh, expertise to help us evaluate um, what you're telling us. Um, but we, as I say, we're not going to be filling in the blanks ourselves. And too often, um, it's fairly rare, but it does happen too often, uh, we see um, good um, uh, projects, um, successful initiatives, that have been compromised in the telling um, by not giving us that full story. Now, crucially, as Fiona um, told you uh, first up, there are two stages in the application. So in the first stage, we're looking for the highlights of the complete story. You don't need to give us all chapter and verse of that, um, but we want to know what you've been doing and what you've achieved. And when, if you're then selected to go through into the second stage, that's where we're looking for much more evidence, um, a, a much more detailed telling of that story. And of course, time has moved on. So you're very welcome to um, update us um, on your progress uh, uh, since your first uh, stage entry as well. The, um, I'll touch on a, a question that also comes up. Um, as you'll see from those entries, we are taking um, a very um, strategic approach to these awards. Uh, we're looking for big themes, big drivers. We're not measuring scale itself. Um, and, and therefore, um, we often have in a category um, a big organization, perhaps doing a pretty big project, versus a small organization doing for what it is a very big project. So we're not trying to directly measure the impact that that large organization might have by its sheer scale. What we're really looking for um, is um, a, a big ambition, um, something that is changing the landscape um, for your business or for your organization, um, but crucially more widely. Um, and we're, we're looking um, for those drive, that success in driving change rather than trying to measure scale outright. So when we come at it this way, we find it um, a good deal easier to weigh up um, two entries in the same category that might be from organizations that have quite different scale. Um, I'll leave 
my comments at that for now, other than to uh, wish you all the very best of luck with your entry. And, um, and as I say, that fond hope also that it's um, something that's illuminating and um, insightful for you to do, um, for you and your colleagues. And uh, we look forward to getting to know you um, through the uh, judging process. And um, as I say, please do keep those questions coming uh, to Fiona and me. Thanks very much. Thank you, Rod, that was very useful. Now we do have a number of questions that have come through. So let's take a look. So the first question that was asked was, for the COVID category, what sort of information might need to be provided as proof of impact? Well, Rod, I don't know about you, but I would imagine the judges would look for similar to other categories, um, proof of impact. So if your business has pivoted to make a different product, maybe make face masks or something like that, I imagine the judges will be looking for the, you know, what they've done, what sort of numbers, how it's affected people. Anything you would like to add to that, Rod? This is going to be a, a fairly generic thing to say, um, but um, I was very struck um, during um, COVID because I was having detailed conversations with CEOs of a number of organisations for my newsroom um, stories. Um, how much it was uh, changing the nature of business, not just in terms of um, people adjusting temporarily to cope with the um, great pressures of COVID, but how they were hoping to take things forward. Um, so it, in a sense, when we think about the COVID crisis in all its complexity, um, there are um, some um, key factors in it about um, being able to meet immediate needs about being able to meet them in ways that um, have all the right protocols in them in terms of social distancing. A very good example of that, for example, was uh, how well um, abattoirs kept working, um, uh, even through uh, the COVID crisis, in complete contrast to meat works overseas, which have been riddled with uh, uh, and much beset by COVID-19 um, infections amongst the workers. Um, and then, of course, the crucial one is the, the next crucial stage is how that plays out longer term for businesses um, in, in terms of changing the nature of the work they're doing or the products or services they're offering. So, so to th just think about COVID and what it means to us as a, as a society and as an economy and those major factors we're dealing with, and then how what you've done um, in your organization um, has responded to them. Um, I, I hope that rather broad, rather generic uh, response has some helped you on that. Thank you, Rod. Now the next question is, will any examples of previous award entries be made available to bounce ideas off? Now we don't share the entry forms themselves because they're confidential, but what would be useful is we write a very short story about all the finalists and that's on our website. So if you go to sustainable.org.nz, along the top there's awards and then it drops down to past awards. And if you click on all the past years, you can find stories about each of the finalists. So that would be useful. Another question I can answer, where can I find the recording of this after the event? We'll put it on our website on the awards page so you can click through to read it and anyone who's registered will send you the link as well. Next question, how does SBN prevent bias towards members of the network in the judging process? Are the awards judged independently of SBN? Absolutely they are. Rod, do you want to respond to that? Yes, I do. Um, whilst um, we judges are all um, uh, no SBN, uh, yeah. and likewise SBN knows us, and indeed I'm a former trustee of the SBN um, some years back, we do approach this very independently. And so the fact that an entrant is um, a member of SBN um, is not relevant. Similarly, um, if they are a member of SBN, and so uh, uh, we perhaps know more about them than um, an entrant that isn't a member of SBN, we've come very strongly back to the central point I was making. We are judging people on the quality of the entry, not the um, other knowledge we have about them that we're bringing to the entry process. Um, so please be reassured that um, uh, the um, judging process um, is um, very independent in that sense. And indeed we judges, um, uh, declare interest uh, where we uh, might have some 
um, sort of um, business or commercial relationship with a particular en entry, we would obviously stand down from judging that um, entry. So we're very uh, clear um, and very articulate amongst ourselves um, about um, any conflict of interest or perceived conflict of interest. Um, and we then um, take steps to um, s remove ourselves from that potential conflict. Thank you, Rod. Well, can I just add one further point? I realize that um, there's a good couple of dozen people um, on this webinar on Zoom as opposed to Facebook Live. So if you are on Zoom, um, you can click on the Q&A panel and send us questions directly. That would be helpful. But rest assured, if you're on Facebook, um, SBN staff are harvesting your comments there and bringing them to us on our Q&A panel on Zoom. Thank you, Rod. How can small businesses compete with corporates for the awards? SMEs might be doing just as much, but at a lesser scale for now. Now, Rod, you did cover that earlier. Was there anything you wanted to add to that? No, just uh, to reinforce that message, um, that we're looking for um, real ingenuity um, uh, impact in, in terms of uh, helping to facilitate um, significant change. Um, and so we're not just we're not using a crude scale of um, uh, a measure of the scale of a small business versus a large one. And um, so rest assured that if you um, are in a category with um, uh, uh, and you turn out to have um, uh, uh, competing entries uh, uh, from large organizations that um, over the years we've learned how to um, balance that out very well. Thank you. Next question. What if we haven't achieved the desired impact yet, but we're on the way towards it? Is it is non-quantifiable impact okay to mention? It is, um, but we are pretty evidence-driven. So not pretty, we are evidence-driven. So you might not have all the um, uh, actual data uh, that you will accrue over time, um, but we would be looking for um, evidence of progress and something um, more robust but than just anecdotal. So at one end of the scale, you've got anecdotal evidence, you know, we think some stuff's moving and having an impact. At the other end of the scale, there's hard data. So uh, in an early stage, we're looking for something um, uh, in the absence of hard data, uh, we're looking for something more solid than anecdotal, but not yet fully data. Also, um, many of the initiatives that are um, uh, featured in entries are uh, works in progress. So we are looking to see substantial um, and enduring progress, um, but not necessarily um, you know, the, the complete picture. So we do on a case, we do award, um, um, we do choose winners um, who are showing um, measurable and enduring progress, um, but we know that they've still got a lot, that there's still a lot more upside to come from the work that they're on. Thank you, Rod. Do you have any advice for entrants on the difference between outputs and outcomes of their initiatives? And which one might be better for the entry? I'd imagine they'd both be useful abroad, you know, they, they, um, and by that, I imagine the differences uh, between the kind of systemic impact you're having and the actual, this much smaller level um, that can be quantified. Uh, Rod, anything you want to add to that? Um, look, both are useful measures, um, but we would be more, we would have a heavier weighting on actual outcomes um, than the generation of outputs. Um, and so do give us both, um, but there would be a stronger weighting on concrete outcomes. Thank you. A question here, is it best to submit the same project under multiple questions or to submit it only under the most appropriate question? Um, well, I imagine it's one initiative that you would be entering. The judges look at all the questions, so whether you answer it under one question or another, as long as it's there somewhere, I think you'd be fine. Would you say, Rod? Yes, uh, we would certainly very strongly discourage um, essentially the same um, 
project um, um, or initiative in the business turning up in multiple categories with um, minimum change between um, the, the various iterations of, of the application um, and the entry. So please do think very hard about what's the strongest suit you're playing um, because um, that's going to be the most crucial thing. You have no idea, nor do we at this stage, who you'll be competing against. Um, and therefore you need to play your strongest card. Um, so do think very, very hard about which category you think um, you are playing to most strongly and enter that. Uh, and um, if I may suggest, Fiona, I think it might be a, a good step if um, an entrant is, uh, an organization is thinking of entering essentially the same um, project or initiative uh, under multiple categories, um, that um, SBN is certainly open to giving advice ahead of time before you progress that entry as to which is your strongest um, and um, uh, category to enter your, your best shot. Um, but also whether given the nature of the project there might be scope to repurpose it in another category, but we'd want to see some quite significant repurposing rather than just um, slapping a different label on the same entry. <laughs> That's right. And if you're not sure which category is best to enter, get in touch with us and we can help out. Uh, the best way to contact us is through our awards email address, which is awards at sustainable.org.nz. But do get in touch if you're unsure, because that does happen from time to time. Now, we've had a couple of questions here about the point in time the entry refers to. Does the entry need to be based on recent events over the past year or could it be something that happened five years ago? Rod, what would you say to that? Uh, very much near time. It, so it could be initi an initiative that started five years ago, um, but um, it uh, has been still running and still having, it, well, it, it's still at least having current impact and the potential to develop more impact, but even better uh, would still be a sort of a work in progress. To offer us something that um, has been done and dusted for a number of years, um, I would have suggested you should have made that entry back when you were doing it. <laughs> so we're, we're basically looking for um, impact uh, and progress over the, the past year. But as I say, there could be a long lead time into that because of the nature of the work. Thank you, Rod. Question from Facebook Live. Um, about whether a past winner, which is in a similar category, would that have any impact on this person being selected to proceed to go forward? So does, if a winner has been selected in a similar category, does that affect a new entrant? Uh, um, no. Um, uh, at, we're, we're always in, interested in continuing progress. So if you've been uh, a past winner, it mean a few you know a few years ago, and you are essentially pursuing a, a very similar avenue, but you've got more progress to tell us, um, and the you know the initiative, the project has moved on in some way. Please, please do enter again. Uh, rather too often, we've had wonderful winners in the past um, who are a bit shy about coming forward again um, a few years down the road to, to tell us what they've been doing since. And, uh, you know, this 2020 um, awards um, is very much based on what people have been up to, have been achieving over 2019. Um, so, uh, and, and into 2020. Um, so please do come back to us uh, if you are a past winner, um, but you've got some significant progress to tell us about some more. Thank you, Rod. And there's one final question. If a project is really transformative, but too early for solid metrics, how best are we to describe the impact? Now, you have spoken a bit about this already. Anything you want to add to that? Um, this is a bit difficult because I come back to stressing um, we need hard evidence and um, and that's why I, I, I try I have that sense of a continuum from you know well actually I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, 
uh, push the continuum further out one way. You might have a hunch that what you're doing is working, and then on uh, coming that that's not good enough. Um, anecdotal evidence is just about creeping onto the scale, and then of course at the far end is you know a longitudinal study with lots of data. So we do need some concrete things to consider, and uh, and it and they need to be reasonably conclusive um, r rather than being open to interpretation. Uh, so I'm sorry if that's not um, an entirely black or white decision, but just think of it from a judge's point of view um, that um, we do need evidence. Um, and as I say, that evidence can come in various forms, um, um, but uh, we do need evidence. Um, and we certainly appreciate that, as I say again, that um, uh, projects or initiatives are works in progress and you, and you might not be fully there um, either in what you're going to achieve or what you're measuring, but we need some evidence, please. Thank you. One more question has come in. Do stories and examples help show impact and outcomes? I would say yes. <laughs> in addition yes. to the quantifiable data, Rod, anything to add? Yes. Uh, stories and examples are uh, very important, but please make them um, succinct um, and very clear about the point you're making um, with that story, uh, that, you know, what that tells us about what you've been achieving. Um, but don't, uh, but crucially, don't overdo that. Don't rely entirely on um, you know, half a dozen, you know, customer references about how wonderful what you've done is. That's good, but we also need some more concrete evidence about the impact on your business, the impact on, um, on your market, um, on your sector. Um, you know, whichever way that this initiative is having an impact, we need evidence beyond, beyond the examples. Thank you, Rod. It looks like that's all the questions we've got for now. But don't forget, we're always here to answer any that come forward and do send them through to the awards email address, awards at sustainable.org.nz. But before I finish, there's two groups that I want to say a big thank you to. First of all is our judges. Now, um, the judges have a phenomenal time. It's a huge uh, task they have to go through, the many, many entrants we have. And we're really grateful to their time, which they volunteer. And like Rod said, they judge it completely independently of the Sustainable Business Network. And also, like he said, they're a mix of some specialists in their own field and some sustainability generalists who have a uh, breadth of experience across the whole um, span. And they work very hard and take this very seriously. And we're very, very grateful to them for their time. So thank you all. And then finally, I want to thank our sponsors. Without these sponsors, we really couldn't put this on and we're incredibly grateful to them, particularly this year when times are tight. So thank you to everyone listed here. Meridian, Auckland Council, Department of Conservation, Ika, Waka Kotahi, Toy2, Mass, Kind & Co and New World. Thank you, all of you. And that I think is all we have time for today. Thank you from me. We really appreciate you listening and hope it's been a help in putting your awards entry in. And do enter. It's a really good opportunity to take stock of where you're at now and hopefully get recognition for your great efforts. Um, 28th July is the closing date, so don't miss out and do contact us if you have any queries. So that's thank you and goodbye from me and Rod. Thank you, Fiona. I just want to uh, say I, my fellow judges and I just hugely look forward to seeing um, what you're up to come very lively and glorious technicolor off the page um, as we judge. And um, the awards dinner, COVID social distancing and the like, uh, willing uh, late in the year, or, uh, is a great night out with a, a very, very large gathering. I think it was about seven or 800 people last year. It would be equally that, if not more, this year. Um, so it's um, and that's a, a wonderful conclusion uh, and celebration of uh, this huge effort um, that you all would be putting into your entries. So all the best with them, and uh, uh, I can't wait to start reading the entries. Lovely. Thank you, Rod, and goodbye all. Thanks. See you. <laughs>